My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. I live by routines, especially my same-day delivery routine with Shipped. Because when Sunday rolls around, I'm not scared. I got my shopper on the way with all my favorites. Shipped, delight in every delivery. Learn more at Shipped.com. Looking to invest? Start your journey by exploring exchange-traded funds with GlobalX ETFs. Exchange-traded funds, or ETFs for short, create baskets of stocks, bonds, and other assets that you can buy in a single trade. GlobalX specializes in ETFs that track emerging trends, like the rise of artificial intelligence, as well as strategies aimed to generate income potential. Visit GlobalXETFs.com to discover how you can get started. This is Chris. This is Randy. And And welcome welcome to to Four Four Pillar Pillar Sports. Sports. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for Four Pillar Sports. This, of course, is Randy. And joining me, as always, of course, is my brother, Chris. Chris, how you doing, brother? Brother, it's football season. How do you think I'm doing? We're doing great. Well, one of us is doing great. (laughs) (laughs) You know what, sir? (laughs) The Ducks were undefeated. I don't care about oh, the pros. Oh, we're not talking about the pros, are we? Nope, we're talking about the Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that later. But yeah, yeah other than that, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, we really can't talk about talk about you know, you know, our our home team here in Jacksonville area. <laughs> yeah, right. Can't really talk about them. Can't really talk about the Gators. It's like, what is going on with these guys? But let's get into some wrestling talk first because there was some good stuff that happened on Friday night SmackDown. All right. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I kind of skipped out on Raw this week. So if anything has happened, that's my bad. But we are heading into bad blood. Yes. So Let's get into this Friday Night Smackdown because it was the premiere on USA, baby. That's right. USA season premiere also. Uh, they were really going all out to start it off. As they started it off with the undisputed WWE champion Cody Rhodes putting his title on the line against the new head of the table, Solo Sequoia, inside a steel gauge match. Now, when you say... New head of the table, you mean quotation marks, right? Of course. Right, okay, okay. Air quote. Air quotes. Air quote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I liked about this, too, is it was, you know, the first, uh, was it the first 30 minutes, or was it, it was the first 30 minutes because the Monday night was the first hour. Yeah. So the first 30 minutes of SmackDown was commercial free. Absolutely. Which, I mean, is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, because usually we get commercial breaks like every five five minutes. minutes (laughs) So it was pretty cool. But, yes, this still cage match, dude. It was off and popping. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. It was insane, to say the least, to get the match or to get the night started. Uh, You know, it was a great night. Uh, Let's see here. Hold on. I went too far. (laughs) All right, so as he as Cody Rose put this title on the line in the devastating kill, kill steel cage match against um, Solo Sequoia, Solo was dominant early in the matchup. Uh, he would send Cody crashing into the steel cage quite a few times, even busting Rhodes open, leaving him down and injured often. But the American Nightmare will would not will would fight back and delivered some hellacious Cody cutters, uh, even one from nearly the top of the cage evening the odds against his rival. Uh, both superstars found themselves precariously perched near the top of the cage, and Solo delivered a dynamic low blow as he hit a superplex from the top of the structure. 
Coach took an unfathomable beating, getting hit by multiple strikes and even flying, even a flying splash, but mustered up enough strength for a crossroads only for Sequoia to kick out. The champion would scale the cage and hit gravity, a gravity-defying cross-body splash, but not even that was enough to secure a win over Solo at that moment. Sequoia, though, would, would go for Samoan Spike one final time, but it was countered into the crossroads delivered by the American Nightmare for the win. Of course, then the bloodline would come out to help attack Cody only for the OTC to make his return right. to Friday Night right. SmackDown. This was quite interesting because, you know, as Roman gets in the ring, he he motions for Jacob Fatu to come in there, bro. Right. When them two lock horns, I'm scared, dude. It's going to be brutal. <laughs> You're going to have to get more than a referee of that ring, dude. You're going to have to get some, some policemen, something, because, <laughs> whoo, boy. Yeah. Lay some scary dudes. All right, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong when those two get going and yes. battle it out. It's, it's going to be amazing. Nice. Uh, you know, Rome came in, did some um, house cleaning a little bit. Um, they almost ended up being a numbers game, but Cody would eventually help Roman to even out the odds and get the, everything going. Um, a little bit standoffish there, too. And so, yes, yeah, I jumped to the, the climax of it where yeah. he's like, come on. <laughs> yep, Jacob. Um, and he was going to, and then then so pulled him out of the ring. Yeah, I was like, "This is so dumb, dude." Right. Like, I'm wondering what's going to happen though. What do you think is going to happen to Bad Blood? There's rumors. What if? What if? You know? What if Roman turns on Cody? Quite possibly. I um, mean, but I don't know though, because I'm pretty stoked and thinking that they're going to uh, do a Bloodline versus Bloodline at War Games. All right. So. It seems to be um, where that's headed. But we'll have to get more into that um, potential match down on because we know that was part of the end of SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, next up, we had Minchin taken on Piper Nevin. Uh, Minchin brought a fight to right, brought the fight right to Piper Nevin and paid off with a victory. She picked up a major singles victory over Piper. Uh, both superstars threw caution to the wind with Minchin hitting a dive outside the ring and Nevin hitting a huge cannonball. But Minchin scored the win with an eat, eat the feet. That's a weird. Eat the feet, yeah. It's a, it's a good move, dude. I, uh, yeah, it's just a weird name. <laughs> eat the feet. I don't know if I want to eat any feet, but all right. Eat the feet. Uh, after the match, Chelsea Green and Niven would attack Minchin and put her through a trash can with an unpretty, unprettier. Eesh. Yeah, bro. Um, crazy, dude. It was. It was a good match. I, I didn't I didn't really totally pay attention to this one, but I do know that I like the fact that Triple H is putting talent in there that Vince McMahon refused to. All right. You know what I'm saying? Because Mitchin, wasn't she a part of uh, the OC and all that for a while? I think so. I think you're and, right about that. And uh, she didn't really get a full-on push there. So now she's getting this push with SmackDown. Also, she's been featured lately on NXT. So that's that's pretty cool in that, right? Yeah. Um, I like what he's doing with this crossover thing where, you know, sometimes superstars will show up on NXT. Yeah. I mean, it makes things interesting. And then him also working with other companies and whatnot helps out too. But it was, it was an okay match. I mean... Yeah. It, it, you know, you can't really, you can't really follow the Cody Rhodes versus Solo score, so Right. I mean, you got to throw something in between. Yeah, yeah. Because it it worked out because the next match, of course, was the Kevin Owens uh, mystery tag partner tag match against A Town Down. Oh man. <laughs> or A Town Down Under. Sorry, I forgot the under part. Yeah, uh, down under. I'm sure they probably forget their underwear all the time. But anyways, I digress. Oh. Uh, <laughs> The mystery partner ended up being uh, Ricky, um, <laughs> which was hilarious, until it was announced by someone ringside that, in fact, his actual tag team partner was there, ready to go for the match, and then we heard, uh, I hear voices in my head. <laughs> that we did, and it was, it was the whole crowd gave a good pop for it. I was happy to see Orton... 
Horton back, you know what I mean? Because he's been having problems lately. I mean, with his back and whatnot, it's kind of mm. iffy. You know, the world title match, I was kind of like, eh. Yeah. So it was nice to see him come back, and they actually kicked some ass. Oh, yeah. Match. Well, I mean, going up against those two, though. It's yeah. Those two. That's the first. That's the yeah. First. Um, I like how they're kind of trying to split, split them up. Because Awesome Theory, um, in the Independence, he he wasn't like necessarily a good guy, but he wasn't necessarily a bad guy. He's kind of in between, and a lot of people actually liked him in the Independence. And I don't think Awesome Theory has gotten the right kind of push that he should. Like this whole thing with him and John Cena should have been done totally different. Yeah, and I think if Triple H would have had full control over that. Yeah, that would have been definitely different. It would have been different. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, so do we possibly see a tag championship in the works for Kevin Owens and Randy Orton down the line? Cause... They're talking about it. They're talking about it. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it wouldn't be a wouldn't be a bad thing. But I mean, it's just, for me. I I, I want to see Orton in the title picture. I don't care that. You know, he's got a bad back. Like, literally, his his dad worked his ass off his whole career. Randy Orton's come back from a pretty much light threat, you know, career-threatening injury, mm -hmm. and he can still go. Yeah. I, I mean, mean he, he, just because he's a tag champion doesn't necessarily mean he's going to not be in the main title picture either. Usually, if they're, they're running with tag titles, they don't usually throw them into, you know, the... The main title picture there. Well, I know, but then they they have been working it a little differently lately too, because we true we day, saw Judgment true. Day wearing almost all gold at yeah. one point. I mean, I get it; it was a faction, but instead of just the two of them. But I mean, there's a possibility. I mean, it doesn't totally negate it out of yeah everything. out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah, it's just going to be interesting because I really would like to see how you know. How Orton and Cody would go up against each other, being former Legacy members. Dude, that would be the one of the baddest matches you ever gonna see, dude. Because yeah. that's gonna be like, you know, I could imagine that being like, like Ric Flair and Triple H. You remember when they fought each other after Evolution? Yeah. I could see that because Randy Orton was the guy that brought him up. Mm -hmm. You know, so. It would be really cool to see those two finally lock horns. And, you know, I mean, I know they're buddies or whatever, but it would be cool to see a storyline with them where they actually get into it. So, right. Absolutely. It would definitely. I would. That's why I that said one. I want to see him in the, in the main title picture because I think him and Cody could tell an awesome story. Even if Randy didn't win. They could tell a story, dude. Oh, absolutely. So. Well, and what's great too is with the way with Orton's character, you won't know that it's about to be a story until that RKO out of nowhere comes. Because you have, oh, cool, they're best buddies. They fend it off, you know, like maybe another bloodline attack. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, great. And then all of a sudden, Orton just goes, oh, I hit someone. Whoa, I lost my microphone. Bro. My bad. Bro, that's like totally just, wow. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm back, sort of. Are you sure about that? <laughs> you sure about that? You sure about that? <laughs> anyways. <laughs> but anyways, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you never know when it's going to strike. So, if it, you know, that's the best part about it, though, I've always felt. I wish we had that on camera. That would be great. Right. <laughs> It was fun. That would have been great for our life. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. But so that's one of the best things about, like I was saying about his character, is just that RKO out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden, a storyline just blows up in your right. face. I mean, he's very, very conniving and sneaky, but the way they do things with Red Jordan. Yeah, it's fantastic. So. All right, so we had a best of five series uh, for a number one contendership for the United States Championship to take on L.A. Knight. Yeah. Yeah. As it was Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes, and it would be Andrade who would win the fifth and final match between uh, these two combatants to get to the right to two-faced. 
L.A. Night. I believe at Bad Blood. If it's, isn't it at Bad it's Blood? Bad Blood, yes. Um, yeah, that's going to be a good match, dude. And that wasn't too bad of a match itself. Um, there were some good spots in it. I enjoyed watching it, but uh, I enjoyed the end because you got to see L.A. Knight come out and Andrade kind of their little, you know, <laughs> mingle before actually probably seeing each other in the ring next week. All right. So. Absolutely, man. I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm. It's been kind of weird because L.A. hasn't been doing much. So it'll be kind of nice to finally see him back into going again. Um, you know, it's interesting because he's, he's so... But he doesn't really have to do anything. He's one of them guys, dude. All you, all you got to do is give him a mic. And yeah. I'm sorry, but he can out-talk anybody. He can out-talk CM Punk. Yeah. He can out-talk anybody. And he can make something funny as hell, dude. He can be real serious. We can make it funny as hell. Yeah, we got a, we got a good glimpse of it because you know we all know that Cena is one of the best on the mic. Yeah, and we got a little bit of that. And yeah, that's what I would love to see. I, mean, I wouldn't even mind if maybe one of Cena's first matches back when he's officially starting the end of his reign is maybe for a United States title right, against that's... LA Knight. Yeah. Because it, one, it boosts LA Knight's credibility a little bit more. He, he's got good credibility. He definitely does. But to then beat Cena mm-hmm. or be put over by Cena, yeah, because of the lead up to it, yeah, and because of the lead up to it between the two of them on on promos, for the match, right? Phenomenal. Will be fantastic. Absolutely, want to see that just because that'd be amazing. And um, I really don't like this. Uh, this comparison to, oh, you, your modern day Stone Cold and, and Rock mixed together. It's like, you guys are a bunch of dumbasses. You know, uh, he took what he could and he made it what it is. Yeah. I mean, the man has balls. Yeah. Let, let's, let's put it out there. He, he can talk better than The Miz. The Miz can talk. Yeah, he can. I mean,. As much as you can't stand to look at his face sometimes, right. you can talk, okay? Yeah, I can. And, I mean, for real, and the best thing about, I would say, even The Miz is, you know, he's one of them guys that he doesn't really have to do anything either. He goes out there and spits a promo, and everybody is either cheering him or they're booing, and usually they're booing. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one thing you can say about LA Knight. He's a mega star. Yeah. He really is. Absolutely. I mean, he's just got that it factor to him. Like, well, you know, I could, I could see him versus the Rock. I could see it all. Yeah. Cause that dude is just, I, kn- I know he's older, but who cares? Right. If he can go, let him go. So. And you gotta give him credit too, because he, he's earned it because he's been a company, company guy. Yeah. He's done everything asked of him by WWE. Uh, I mean, he even had that weird thing with the uh, when he was Max Dupree when they when he went L.A. Knight, and then they changed him to Max Dupree to do the what was it the Max models or whatever maximum models thing. I think so. I think it's what it was when they had Maxine and him, and then I can't remember the other guy. Yeah, um, Mace or whatever. His yeah, name was. whatever he was, and then he went back to being L.A. Knight again. And, you know he's he's paid his dues. And enough. Not only that, but he's paid his dues in other co- companies too, dude. Yeah. So I mean, being Eli Drake and whatnot. Yeah. So the guy, the guy has prestige, and he is the last guy that Paul Bear ever freaking managed. Yeah. If Paul Bear puts his his trademark on him, right? He's gold, dude. That's right. And, I mean. He held the million dollar title. Yeah. <laughs> Can't say much about the guy. All right. I yeah. mean, he's he's where he needs to be, but I think he needs to be going after that main title. Yeah. I like that they're pushing him with the U.S. title because it gives you somebody that's there whenever Cody's not there or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I still would rather see him in the main title hunt. Huh? Right. There's certain guys out there that you just like, man, but you know that they're pushing things a certain way and that's, they have their guys. Right. So. I think he will be. I mean. Eventually, yeah. I Like I said, it was a great for them to do that 
for him though. After you know he he went through the gauntlet of trying to beat Ro- be one of the guys that beat Roman, yeah, and ended up not getting there. And I think this was gr- good on them because now because now you also get to see how the crowd reacts to him as being champion without him being the main champion. How how well do they buy into him being champion? Because now if you can see how he is as a champion, and see now how you can look at see how his merch show do, yeah. see how all that goes. Yeah, I mean I get it. But the guy has a window. He has a ceiling. Yeah. And if we don't get him going to the main title soon, we're not going to get it. Yeah, I think it's coming. Elton yeah. is just a guy. I, I do like the way Triple H does run things because, you know, I've seen guys over in NXT that for the longest time. They're like, why aren't you moving them up? Like, you keep them there. Yeah. Like, let them go up. And... We finally got to see it with Braun Breaker yeah. being the Intercontinental t- yeah. Champion. I mean, I mean, for the longest time we said, oh, I want to see him versus Roman or him versus Brock. You know. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I w- I wouldn't be surprised if um, though if like we don't see maybe LA Knight win the R- Rumble in the next year or two. Yeah, dude. Because then even if you want to keep a, a storyline going, Cody with something else. That gives you an opportunity to have him go after Gunther. True. And that's a good match. Him, LA it Knight versus Gunther. Is. Because then you can also kind of do it because, you know, um, it's a little bit of technically you want to go with the old old school feel of like the, you know, the late 80s, early 90s of good versus evil, the foreigner versus the American. Yeah. You know, so you have Gunther who is the, you know, the, in, the ring general that, general that has that German... Yeah. Swagger and stuff versus the the American hero that isn't you can build up. Isn't he Austrian? Yes. Yes, yeah. but I'm just saying. <laughs> but his persona is supposed to be. Yeah. Because technically also somebody else with that word, a little mustache, was Austrian. So. Uh, uh, and we know how all that went. Uh, 19- yeah, don't even go there, bro. I'm just saying. <laughs> he was also technically Austrian. <laughs> So the leader of the thing, <laughs> bro. Just saying. It's like that first bill or stuff you hit me with last night. It like chipped me out. Oh, oh, my room thinking. Oh God. What's worse is then I watched Pest and I forgot he's in, he's the hunter. And Pest. And oh Pest. man. <laughs> oh no, bro. Yeah. No, bro. He's the hunter and Pest. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. And if those of you that don't know, we are talking about what's the name again? Uh, Jeff, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Jones. Jones, actor Jeffrey Jones, who's been because we we were talking about blacklisted from Hollywood. Yeah, we were talking about Beetlejuice because we just recently went and seen the new Beetlejuice. Yep, we loved it. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yes, and uh, we loved how they incorporated incorporated his character in the in the movie. And, uh, but yeah, it just got us talking about why he wasn't in the movie. <laughs> and then Randy hit me with the Ferris Bueller's movie last night. And I went, what? Yeah. So. Makes his obsession with Ferris a little bit more weird. Yeah. In that case. And then, and then when you see, and then when I watched the pest, I went, oh my God. <laughs> that came back to bite me in the ass because there he is, obsessed yeah. again. With a younger uh, man. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> Never mind. And then, and then it bothered me too because he's also a German in that movie. So. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Get to uh, Friday Night Smackdown. Night Smackdown. Night Smackdown. <laughs> so at the end of the night, we had we were hearing uh, rumors of well, not rumors. We were hearing of contract and negotiations for a tag match at Bad Blood between Solo and Jacob Fatu versus Roman and Cody. Cody came in, said he was refusing to sign it because as far as he was concerned, he was absolutely done with the bloodline. Well, then Roman said, I'm going to come and talk to the crowd and everybody about it um, before the show completely goes off off air. Basically tells him that he doesn't need anybody. He doesn't need anybody and that he is the ruler of the ring, which then Cody went, wait a minute, bud. I believe this is make me as he holds up his title 
the leader of this ring. <laughs> yep. This is my yard now, my yeah. domain, my ring. And then, of course, uh, they would be attacked by the uh, bloodline. They would be, well, they were blindsided by uh, Tonga and uh, Tola. Tola. Uh, and then, um, you know, and then, of course, they would beat them off. And then Roman signed the contract. And then Cody was like, all right, I'll sign the contract too. Let's do this. Yeah. So uh, that's going to make it for an interesting. Bad blood. It's gonna make it interesting because I'm wondering, too, is he gonna is he gonna turn on him or is he really going full on babyface? You could technically maybe push it and maybe see if how Cody looks as a heel. Could Cody turn on him and leave him to the bloodline? <sighs> that would be uh, quite the plot twist there, too. So what? Yeah. Be like, oh yeah, you like, oh I'm gonna. Tag you because you need to tag me, and then Roman's like, "Fine, I go to tag you." And Cody just hops off the ring and walks off. The problem, the thing with that is, though, you're gonna have fans that'll be conflicted with that, like, you know, because Roman. Let's be honest, I was throwing the ones up yeah. at SummerSlam when he was going against Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Okay. So was I. So are you. But there wasn't a whole lot of people out there doing that. Yeah. And now all of a sudden he's coming back as OTC. Mm -hmm. And they chanted it. And he called it. He called his own shot. Yep. He goes, when I leave, y'all going to be calling my name wanting me back. Yep. And what did they do for two months on social media? Yeah. Is he coming back? Is he coming back? Is he ever going to come back? We don't know if he retired. It's like I'm like, on. wait a minute, wait a minute. Weren't you all just calling everybody else the Cody Crybabies? Now what are you all? The OTC Crybaby? Right. What the hell happened there? And not only that, but let's 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 get this straight. The man had some family pass away. <clears throat> yep. He had some personal issues to take care of. He and still has medical issues, whether the people want to say anything about right? it. Right. They don't ever want to talk about it, but he really does. Yeah. I mean there's times the man don't even want to get out of bed. So, And that's why I've always said, I've always been a proponent of him being, I was okay with him being not an everyday champion because he had. Because he wasn't Brock Lesnar that was just, oh, I'm better than everybody, so I'm going to go sit my ass on my ranch and act like I'm just, yeah, you know. I, I'd never cared for that shit. No, I didn't either. Um, but anyways, we digress. Yeah. So with that, we'll just go ahead and uh, switch gears. We're going to talk a little baseball, ladies Let's and gentlemen. Let's do that. Let's lighten the mood in this house. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it has happened. It happened earlier today down in Miami, Florida at Marlin Park. That's right. Shohei Otane is now the first Major League Baseball player in history to be a 50-50 member. 50 home runs on a season. 50 stolen bases congratulations to him and congratulations to all of dodger nation baby that's just that's yeah. crazy dude that's cool dude and as far as being a little kid watching baseball can you imagine how they are no, I know, right? like just ecstatic dude i remember watching watching the home run you know Thing between Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. Dude. Oh yes, the summer of '98. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy, dude. I mean, seeing some something like that happen, that gives kids such hope mm -hmm. for the future, especially young baseball players. Yes. So it is so cool to see something like that happen, and the fact that the season's not even over yet. Right. I don't know if we'll. Let, let's I don't get know. into that game though, because we did talk about it a little bit earlier. But we did. Um. That, did how many pitchers did the other team run? To? Uh, it was, I believe, I said uh, six total pitchers. I'm gonna get the stats up right now. Uh, let's see, Marlins had. Yeah, it was against the Marlins too. Uh, one, two, three, four. Six pitchers, not any pitcher went more than two and a third innings. Uh, 
E. Cabrera was marked with the loss uh, as he gave up and he gave up the most runs. Jeez. Gave up seven runs over two in the third inning. Now, see, he gave up seven, right? None of which was a home run to Otani. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Three of the other pitchers did give up home runs to Otani, and one of them, V. Brujan, uh, let me see, uh, Vidal Brujan, gave up in two thirds of an inning. So he only got two outs recorded in one for an inning. Gave up six earned runs, bro, without getting out of an inning. Show lacking, dude. As the Dodgers would win that game twenty to four. At what point? Do the Marlins just hang it up, dude? I understand you're playing the Dodgers, but at the same time, when you're going through that many pitchers in one game, dude. Right. What does that say about your your pitching staff? What does that say about your bull your bullpen? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's like, dude, it's like, what the freak are we doing? Here? It it reminds me of like little league or something. Just they're out there just. Right, just so, just cr- or just raking on. <laughs> so here's how the scoring broke down for the Dodgers: a sacrifice, a sacrifice fly by Will Smith that led into a run. Shohei, um, in the top of the second, singles to right field, th- uh, drives in a run. Uh, J- Jake Berger for the Marlins hit a home run to close the gap. Uh, I believe that made it two to one. It did, and then, and then came the third. <laughs> <laughs> The third inning. <laughs> Gavin Lux walked to drive in a run as bases were loaded. Andy Pajes also walked to drive in a run as, as the bases were loaded. Chris Taylor sacrificed flight to deep right field, brought in a run. Ugh. And then Shohei doubles, which brought in uh, on Andy Pajes, Andy Pajes and Gavin Lux for Can runs. Can you imagine being a Marlins fan at this point in time? Right. At that point in time, right then and there, there's some angry ass people who are just fuming. Yeah. I mean, how many guys you gotta walk <laughs> for a freaking run? Right? That's crazy. And then uh, Griffin Conine, I wonder if he's related to Jeff Conine, a former Marlin, because that'd be interesting if he was. Um, homework and brought, you know, it's like, hey, you got two runs now. And then there's the top of the six. Shohei, 49th home run of the year. <laughs> Brings in Andy Pajes as well for a two-run shot. And then there's the top of the seventh. <laughs> oh, Andy Pajes uh, doubles to left field, scoring Muncie and Tommy Edmond. Gavin Lux scores on a wild pitch. And then Shohei blasts home run number 50, bringing in Andy Pajes again. <laughs> And then just for good measure, because, you know, why not? Because <laughs> that's just how the Dodgers are going to be. Shohei homers again. <laughs> a three-run home run this time, driving in Taylor and Muncie as well. Tommy Edmonds singles to left, scoring uh, Kike Hernandez and Kevin Kaimeyer. Uh, Muncie then singles to center, scoring um, Hunter Fiducia. And then that's how we ended up with 20. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. And then we gave up a home run in the bottom of the ninth so they get their fourth. And at what point, as, as like the whole Marlins team as a whole, like you say, okay, we need to throw in the towel here. So so here's the fun thing. <laughs> All the Marlins runs they scored came in via the home run. Three of them. Yeah. Ironically, the three home runs were also hit by the Dodgers. All by Shohei Otani. <laughs> So he had as many home runs tonight as the entire Marlins staff and the rest of his team. Yikes. And by him, if you took away all the other runs scored by the Dodgers, all the other RBIs by every other Dodger, Shohei scored or brought in 10 runs by himself. So even if we didn't score any other way but Shohei's homers, we would have won 10 to 4. Yeah, we would have still won 10 to 4. That's crazy, brother. But congratulations again, Shohei Otani on history, baby. Yes, we love it. Congratulations. This is and two two histories. Awesome, dude. Two big histories because first 50-50 guy and also the Dodger single season home run leader. 
That's cool too. Record yeah. holder now. That's what's up. So that is awesome. Yes, sir. It's hard to believe that in our entire existence we never had a guy hit fifty. <laughs> right. And we had to steal one from Anaheim to get it done. <laughs> it's kind of hard to steal a guy. All right, sir. Are you ready to talk some football? Let's go. Football. We're gonna start with. The college game, baby. Gotta love us some college football. So the top 25, we had Friday night, Kansas State taking on Arizona. Kansas State winning easily at home, 31-7. to Our Ducks went it to Corvallis. Had a little bit of a slow start of that game, but then started putting on the whooping stick. That they did, dude, finally, bro. And uh, finally... Dylan Gabriel started running around like a little chicken with his head cut off. <laughs> and it worked out perfectly as he ran for like, I believe it was 68 yards or something like that for a touchdown on an option play. It yeah. was fantastic. Uh, and we just kind of cruised from there as we won 49-14. to 14. Miami crushed the crap out of Ball State, winning 62 to nothing. Your favorite team of all time, the Georgia Bulldogs, won 13-12 in Kentucky. Yeah, my favorite. Yeah, well, I'm I'm gonna do my best to not get on my soapbox about how I feel about what happened with the uh, a, a people after that. Uh, anyways, uh, Texas, despite losing their quarterback f- to an injury, had Arch Manning, who looks more like his grandfather than either one of his uncles. <laughs> right. As he had a 67-yard scramble touchdown run, and the Texas Longhorns beat up. Uh, University of Texas San Antonio 56-7. And the game I thought was actually going to be good because I thought maybe the crowd would help kind of motivate Wisconsin to get up for the Alabama team. Did not help. <laughs> uh, as Alabama rolled in Wisconsin at Camp Randall 42-10. to I really thought that that – I didn't think Wisconsin was going to win. But if I would have thought 42-10 to Alabama over Wisconsin, I would have assumed – in Tuscaloosa, not Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> right. I just, it's just like, wow. Crazy, bro. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I expected at least Wisconsin to kind of like, you know, keep them to like 28 and maybe lose by no, no more than 10, you know, like 27-17 or something like that. Yeah. Make it like it was a struggle. It, it looked like you struggled. Alabama just went, yeah. We're Alabama. Uh, Duh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how that went. Uh, Ole Miss crushed Wake Forest 40-6. to Missouri had a tight one with Boston College, but did win 27-21. Uh, Tennessee had Kent State, and Kent State probably should have just stayed home because they didn't bother packing anybody who could uh, score a point as they got blown out 71 nothing. What? Yeah. It's in Tennessee, so. At least it wasn't at home. No. But, yeah, that's bad. Uh, let's see. Utah went to Utah State and won 38-21. Oklahoma State went to Tulsa, won 45-10. Oklahoma beat Tulane, 34-19. Uh, what ended up being a really good game, uh, the ESPN College Game Day crew were there as LSU snuck out a win in South Carolina, 36-33. I honestly feel like uh, a South Carolina starting quarterback got hurt. Might have been a different outcome if he didn't. Right. Because um, old uh, Robbie Ashford, who used to play at Oregon and got mad and transferred, it looks okay, so bud. No wonder you didn't get <laughs> get a chance. Right. Just saying. And it sucks. Uh, Michigan bounced back with a 28-18 win over Arkansas State. Notre Dame... Took their anger and frustration out after that loss they had last week to beat the crap out of Purdue in-state rival 66-7. Dang, bro. At Purdue. And then Nebraska beat Northern Iowa just for the hell of it, I guess, 34-3. It was Northern Iowa. Sorry, Kurt. Your team, your college got blown out. (laughs) But that's okay. You talk crap about the Rams almost all the time you get. But anyway, I'm going to digress on that one. Uh, and I believe the 
Gators lost, wasn't it? This the this was when they played Texas A and M. We kind of got rolled. Yep. Double check that. Uh, where is? Oh, I went too far. That's why. <laughs> oh, why am I in week four? I want week three. Dude, don't go back to the freaking top twenty-five. Okay, it was thirty-three to twenty, but still, it felt worse than that was. It was. Um, it's just unbelievable. I'm just kind of like, Ugh. so. Any other thing? Anything out of that stick out to you that you want to talk about? Or are you good? I'm good, brother. What about you? I'm pretty good. Um, and I'm really wanting. Let's just go ahead and talk NFL because I, I don't want to get on a soapbox. Huh. Sounds good. Sounds um, good. Because it's just going to make me mad. I do want to add, real quick point out that um, one of the guys I follow on TikTok while I bring back ESPN because I closed out of it on um, accident brought up an interesting idea of who if the Gators, because the Gators are not looking great and might need a new coach, and they met, the boosters met about possibly the buyout for Billy Napier. Um, brought up an interesting person who I think would be interesting because he wants to coach again. And wants to coach college football because he's probably still going to be blacklisted from the NFL for a little bit longer, anyways, because of the things he said about the uh, commissioner. But what would you think of Chucky John Gruden being the coach? Dude, of Florida? that would be awesome. He brought that up. There's a possibility. That's that's yeah. Uh, if he can keep his emails more private or figure out what Hillary does to wipe her computers. <laughs> so he doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> oh man! Oh, did I bring politics into this? My the bad. Differences between back in the day. I, I think people are so soft now. Yeah. Let's be honest. If you take somebody's personal, personal, you know, messages and you leak them out where and take things out of context and. Mm. Ugh. Yeah. So. I digress. But anyways, if if he if he is rehabilitated in himself as he has, I'm sure he has. He's been away for a little bit. Yeah. He hasn't had any controversy spark up since. You know, there's not another thing Actually, where we haven't heard much of anything from him. So yeah. So I mean, I'd be down. It'd be cool. I'd be down going to swamp more often. Heck yeah. And because uh, you know he'll have those guys ready. I think the the thing that sucks is we have football teams around us. But it's kind of hard to want to go watch a game when you know the team's just gonna get rolled. Yeah. So unfortunately, unless you watch them play a well in college, you can watch them play like someone like Samford like the week before and just yeah. roll the small school. Right. Of course, then again, I can't say that because Oregon didn't roll the small school in the first week. <laughs> We only won 21, but at least we won 21 14. Right. Anyways, I got to stop. I'm going to get on my soapbox again. Don't about get on the box, bro. Don't get on the box. And the media and their SEC bias, but I, let's go to football. Let's go to <laughs> let's talk pros. Let's talk pros. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, so let's run down the scores, and then I'll give us I'll give us the update, and then we'll uh, we'll close close that. Well, actually, no. You know what? Let's do this. Let's talk about the first game. Talk about Tua, and then we'll close out on the rest of the scores and our prediction. Cool. Because I, I think we, I don't think we want to end on the somber note with Tua. No, we don't. All right. So first up, let's talk about Thursday night football. The Bills ended up beating the Dolphins, thirty-one to ten, in the game, late in the game. Well, not, not too late in the game. It was in, I believe, the third quarter. Tua did a scramble run. Uh, looked like he tried to dive for yard for more yardage. Ended up slamming in, ironically, into Demar Hamlin. That's just ironic. Yeah. Um, resulting in another concussion. But I want him to. I want him to retire. Me too, man. Uh, for his health. For his health and the fact that he's still a young man. Yeah. Um, he's got a lot of life left to live. He does. After football. And, and what's great too is he's charismatic. He, he could do if he wanted to stick with football. You tell me that there wouldn't be anybody who, network-wise, who wouldn't love to have him. 
ESPN would call him. ESPN would call him for game call it game day if he'd rather do that instead right. of doing the pros. You know CBS would call. Fox would call. ESPN, of course, would call. Um, I'm trying to think there's you know, in the SEC network, it's still technically ESPN, but the SEC yeah. network would call. Uh, the Big Ten network would call. Technically Fox still, but you know, I digress. The as the under score of the umbrella that is, you know, the major media company, the littler company, which is the networks. Yeah. Um, it, he, oh, Amazon would probably call. He's got, he, like you said, he's got charisma, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I would definitely like to see him still be involved somewhere in football. If he wanted. It, yeah, if he wanted. Yeah. So. Or he could coach. That, too. I was thinking that. Yeah. Coaching wouldn't be he's, a bad idea. He's got ample opportunities. You know, he can be spoke. He can, he can be a spokesman. He got he's got all sorts of opportunities. Because the next hit could be the hit that it's completely over, anyways. Well, Don't risk the next hit making you the next Eric Legrand or Christopher Reeve. Yeah, man, it's it's very. Not that Christopher Reeve was injured football player. No, but it's very scary to see someone like that, especially someone his age. You know, and I understand football is a hard-hitting game. Things happen, and these guys have been getting, you know, hit since they were kids. So it takes a toll on your body. It does. There's nothing, there's nothing like cowardice or anything like that. About him bowing out and saying, dude, I've had enough. Yeah. Like, you want a family, you want a life, you want to, you know, keep, you know, keep being on this earth. You've got to do something different. Right. And also, you have, you have made generational money already. Yeah. But like I said, you have still opportunity to make generational wealth as well. Because I'm telling you, there's no way, there's not a network that would beg him to be on theirs. There would be a bidding war. He could probably go right now and probably fetch at least eight million a year yeah. at any of the networks if he wanted. Depending on what level he also wanted to go at, going right. to. So he has plenty of options. And I just don't want I just don't want to see because we all remember how we're lucky. Well we're lucky to see what the what happened with Ryan Shazier and the fact that he went from Possibly being not able to ever walk again. To at least being able to walk again. But it's still. Yeah. You don't want to risk it. I mean, and then, like I said, it is a little ironic, though, that he ran. And the he sad thing into about Martin. that is, too, is I totally had this, this, like, I don't know, Cinderella dream that I wanted him to be, to come back and play and all that other stuff. But, there's no way. Yeah. I should do. I mean, after after that, he was just. You could tell it was different. Yeah. So, um, Absolutely. it's really sad to see this with Tua, but you're right. He does have a future, and he's a bright young man. So mm-hmm. I'd like to see him be doing something, but you know, we don't want to see him get hurt. Right. So, we don't want to see the worst that could happen. Yeah, it's time to move on. But the the problem with that is what are the Dolphins going to do right now? Who are they going to call? Well, I mean, no one right now. They're just going to stick with Tyler, Skylar Thompson right now. and then Unless they call Tom Brady. Tom's in the middle of, him, <laughs> in the middle of <laughs> doing uh, announcing himself, for one. Just say it, bro. And, just and say two, it. he's still working on figuring out whether or not he wants to be an owner of the Raiders. He can't do all three. <laughs> Does he still trying to get his um, you know, his stuff figured out for that. I mean, I get it. He does live my, in Miami now, has a mansion in Miami. So, I mean, could happen, but I just, I don't see it. I think he's, I think Tom's ready to be in the booth and just make that money and not have to worry about getting hit. I don't know, man. Tom's kind of a, I think he's done. He's kind of an arrogant son of a. Yeah, he is, but I, I think <laughs> Which means you might still have some fight in him, so. I mean, talk about it with somebody, it'll be okay if something happened on a hit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right, never mind, never mind. I didn't mean to get you out of that show, boss. Let's, <laughs> let's move on from this subject. Anyway, one quick final note. I agree with Colin Coward. I think there should be some sort of am amnesty clause. Shut, shut up. We don't want to hear from you. Um, your opinion does not matter here. You're a cat. My cat. Anyways, um, an amnesty clause where if like if something happens like this for an NFL player, a team isn't um, – having that money count against the cap. I don't think you can get it that way, but I kind of feel like if you do a, an in-between, where basically um, you have to give up so much money up front of what you're guaranteeing them anyways, and whatever's left is what's left. Why not do whatever's left after the injury and he decides he's going to retire? Give him another big chunk of what's left, and then whatever's left over after the big chunk, you just pay off over the years and have it be minimal. Hit. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. They need to. They need to do something better when when things like this happen, and uh, not penalize the team for right things like that for accidents on. that it's out of the side of their control. Yeah. So you know, it's not like they signed him to a stupid contract because oh, they didn't have a better option. They felt he was the future quarterback, their present and their future. It's not like, oh, I just gave him a stupid big contract just because, well, I, I, it's I mean, either that or I don't and have nothing. The thing that sucks is we all knew that he had these problems with his, with his you know. Yeah, and then there's that. But, I mean, at the same time, you want to hope and pray that that's not going to happen again, but it did. Mm -hmm. So, that's... the Dolphins were good by taking a chance on yeah, they did good. I'll give them that. Yeah, that was their guy, but still not good to punish them over that. No. All right, so let's go ahead and get some scores, and then we'll tell you how we did, and then y'all can make fun of us for it. Pretty much, it, it, it was Pretty bad. Much. It was bad. All right, so the rest of the games: the Buccaneers beat the Detroit Lions in Detroit, twenty to sixteen. The Browns came to Jacksonville and won eighteen to thirteen. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, Rams lost 41 10. <clears throat> what? What? I uh, <clears throat> can't hear you there. Can you say it a little bit louder? Rams lost 41 to 10 to get Arizona Cardinals. Some bullshit. <laughs> Anyways. Remember, guys, we are fans. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, your Steelers beat the Broncos 13 to 6. I mean, hey, your offense scored a touchdown. Woo! -hoo. Well, it wasn't all field goals. I uh, did. I've been watching, like, Seeing the little threads and stuff, I'm like, Justin Fields is the guy. This should be. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me, dude? Are you kidding me right now? What about Roethlisberger? Roethlisberger's freaking buying into it too, and I'm like, you're full of crap, bro. Who cares if Russell's injured? He's winning. He keep him in. He's not winning. The defense is winning. Right. Also helped you play the rookie quarterback this and week. Honestly, yeah. Like I said, we ain't played nobody good yet. Yeah, we'll see what happens moving forward. Yeah, because we face the Chargers this week. I'm scared, bro. Yeah. So how about the surprise of the weekend? And we'll talk more about it here in a little bit. New Orleans goes into Dallas and routes the Cowboys 44 to 19. Yeah, and what do we yeah? Like Derek Carr is Derek Carr, Derek Carr. Derek Carr back? We'll discuss this more in a little bit. <laughs> the Packers, without their starting quarterback, beat the Colts 16 to 10. Jets get their first win of the season, beating the Titans 24 to 17. So, if you want to be technical, it is Aaron Rodgers' second win, but he still doesn't really like the first win because he only played four snaps. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh... Well, it is true because in the NFL, that's how they do it. If you were the starting quarterback, no matter how much you played in that game, if your team wins, you won the game. You won you as a starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. So that's just how the NFL plays well, it. Well, at least he finally got a game then, dude. But he, he's finished two games so far, and he's in the middle of a third one right now. So There you go. All right. Uh, next up, another surprise from the weekend. The Vikings beat the 49ers 23-17. to That's weird, bro. It is. Uh, Seattle beat the Patriots in overtime 23-10. to Did we maybe underestimate the ability of the Patriots' defense a little bit? Maybe, dude. Maybe just we'll, a wee bit. We'll talk more about it in just a little bit. Um, 
the Giants. First team in NFL history to score three touchdowns, not give up a touchdown, and still lose a game. As they lost to the Commanders 21 to 18. Right. So their kicker, the Commanders kickers, had seven field goals then. Beating Boswell's record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but that's fresh right now, dude. It's, it's still too fresh. <laughs> it's too much. It's too too fresh. much. It's not good. <laughs> uh, uh, Chargers. I mean, they, they ground and pound. That's the only reason why they only won 26-3. to three. I'm sure they could have, if they really wanted to, they could probably have done what the Saints did to the Carolinas like they did the week before. Yeah. But, uh, we know Harbaugh's a ground and pound guy, so that's the only reason why it's 26-3. to three. It is a blowout, whether you want to admit to it or not. Right. Um, another shocker of the weekend, the Raiders pulling off the upset in Baltimore. Yeah. 26-23. to th- 23. The game of the weekend, of course, was the Kansas City Chiefs and Cincinnati Bengals as it literally came down to a walk-off field goal for Kansas City to win that one, 26-25. The Texans handled the Bears 19-13. And on Monday Night Football, the Atlanta Falcones, I like to call them the Falcones for some reason, I just do, just don't know why, Uh, go to Philadelphia and have Kirko Chains has he reversed his month, his prime time curse on himself and showed up on the final drive and led a touchdown with no timeouts? What? Are we in Twilight Zone? I feel like it. Or, or as the uh, cool kids would say, are we in the Upside Down? Uh, Stranger <laughs> Things reference. Right, right. Even though I had never saw one episode. <laughs> I watched like the first season. I tried to stay in there, but it was just kind of weird. But... Yeah, so we'll get do some <laughs> game breakdowns. We'll tell you our record real quick, and then you can make fun of us as we talk about what happened over the weekend. Yeah, I don't want to do this. This is <laughs> awkward, bro. <laughs> so we had every game exact. We picked the game each game exactly the same. <laughs> so we had the same record. And when I was putting up our record onto the Excel, I was like, "This isn't looking good." <laughs> <laughs> He texted me in the middle of doing it. He was like, uh, dude, this ain't it's good. bad. It's bad. Uh, we eventually got it down to where we were. We ended up finishing both at seven and nine in our predictions. So that was uh, that was unfortunate to say the least. <laughs> yeah, man. Not seven and nine, bro. Uh, obviously, the surprising games that threw us off. I can't say totally that Buffalo is a surprising game but over the, the Dolphins. But the Raiders in Baltimore, bro. Yeah, that one. Uh, the Cardinals making the Rams look like absolute garbage. I know we are, we got injuries and stuff, but the fact that he they were able to make us look like complete garbage was a bit of a shocker. To say the least, that was, uh, you know, that shocker like that. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, injuries, I understand, but 41 to 10? Ugh. Yeah, bro. Uh... Made me want to cry. <laughs> Didn't even bother watching it when we got home from doing the kid run. Yeah. Uh, I, we, we've seen a little bit of something. You're like, I'm not even going to bother. And I was like, what? And I was like, you, you looking down at the scores or something? And he was, dude. He actually seen the score and said, yep, I'm glad I'm not watching that shit. Yeah. That would have just pissed me off. I was just like, <laughs> you know what? Nah, nah, we're, we're not we're not even going to have to bother. Came home, deleted it. Didn't even watch <laughs> it. Just deleted it. Like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> uh, did, you, did you pay attention to any of the stuff they talked about on ESPN with it or anything? Or nope, you... I didn't, I didn't want to hear nothing from nobody. <laughs> I, 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 didn't even, I, I didn't even pay attention <laughs> to it. Randy, Randy went ghost. That's right. You ghost my team ghosted me. I ghosted them right back. <laughs> Damn, I'm just uh, that one was me. The Browns though, dude. All of a sudden, Deshaun Watson looked like a little bit of his old self in that game. I'm like, really? Now you want to show up and look like you're a good quarterback? You yeah. Freaking dick. Yeah. I'm like, come on. And then, oh, this killed me. 
you have a chance. You're down three. I get they pinch you on the one and a half. But Trevor, Sunshine, throw the ball away, bro. Don't take the sack. Right? Uh, he still makes some questionable freaking calls, dude. But we're in year four now. That's what I'm saying, dude. It's like, why are you still doing rookie, you know? Rookie errors in year four. And this is what? His third season with the same coaching staff? It's not like he's had a new yeah. coaching staff every year. Yeah. There's no excuse now. you got to be better. I'm, I'm Now I'm sure... Um, Shad, Tony, or something going, well, did we really just pay this idiot? And I hate to say that about Trevor. I love Trevor. So I do, too. The fact that you said that makes me a little Sorry, but <laughs> that's kind of an idiot move. Throw the ball away. Yeah. Don't take a sack when you have to drive your team down. He doesn't even need to score a touchdown there. Just get into field goal range. But you took a sack. And guess what? Two points for them. They also get the ball back, and then you just got to kill the clock. Yeah. Can't be doing that. Ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> I was a little surprised by what happened week one with Dallas and Cleveland. But I about sh shite myself <laughs> when the Saints went marching in. <laughs> oh, yes, when the Saints went marching <laughs> in to Dallas. Uh... And... Beat them like a drum, bro. 44 to 19? Who's America's team now, bitch? 44 to 19? <laughs> yeah, we bro. Picked, we picked Dallas. We went because we didn't. Because it was the Saints. But because the Saints haven't been the Saints, bro. What are we watching? We're in the Twilight Zone this week, dude. Clint Kubiak? Son of Gary Kubiak? Oh, man. Your son is a coaching freaking genius right now. He's resurrecting Derek Carr. Right? And obviously, Dennis Allen has to let him have full control of the offense and has no say in other than how the game is technically managed by him other than that. Because 44 and 47 points in back-to-back -back weeks? Okay. First week was Carolina, and we all knew Carolina was garbage. But we always say that Dallas is garbage, dude. We, they, we they know by the hype. They only win when they win, and then they get to the playoffs, and they always peter out, dude. Yeah. 44 in <laughs> Dallas? In Dallas. The home opener for the Cowboys, too. Uh, I bet you wish Skip Bayless was sitting right here just so you could talk to him. Oh, my God. I wish it, I had Skip Bayless sitting right across the table for me and also, and also Stephen A. Smith sitting next to me and Shannon Sharp on the other side of me. That way we can just gang up on him for that. Because <laughs> it would be glorious. Yeah. And there's a reason why you're not on uh, FX anymore, sir. Anyways, but I'm just... <laughs> That just shocked the crap out of me, dude. I'm just like, oh my god. I mean, it feels good. But how did we... I mean... It's because... How did we underestimate the Saints so bad? I don't know, dude. That bad. It was that bad. Yeah. And the bad thing is, I don't think we gave them a good record this year. No, we didn't. So. We did not. I don't even think either one of us had them going 500. Or even close. So I I think I think I gave them five, and you either gave them four or six. I can't remember. You were one off of me. I can't remember if you were above me or below me by one. But it's just unbelievable. Yeah, man, crazy, dude. It's gonna be crazy to see what happens throughout the season with them. Um, can they keep this up? Right. I mean, I get it. They also were, were kind of bad last year, so they have a, a technically a soft schedule. But you didn't. I don't know. But you're right. The Cowboys, they're not totally soft. They're not, for one. And two, it's just like. It's in Dallas. Could I have bought that in New Orleans? Probably, because there's some weird psycho mumbo some jumbo voodoo stuff. stuff going on down there on the bayou. <laughs> and I get that. <laughs> 
So it's understandable, but in Dallas? Oh my god, dude. Crazy. Moving on. The Packers winning. We had the Packers winning. It's the fact that the one without Jordan Love, though, was surprising. Right. With a player that they traded for on the day of cut down, roster cut downs to bring on. And he came in. And he didn't. He basically all he had to do was just not f it up, and they would win, and they did. Unbelievable. Crazy, bro. Crazy. It is un insane. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets beating the Titans, putting up twenty four points, uh, holding the Titans to seventeen. I don't know if you've seen the video, and I and if I come across it again, I will share it to you if you haven't. But Will Levis did something so stupid that his head coach took his headset off, staring directly at him, and said, what the F are you doing? Because he looked like he was scrambling, looked back, saw his running back, tried to lateral him the ball, never really made it above ground, and it caused a turnover for the Jets to get. It's just like, and he was... Livid. Livid about what he saw his quarterback just do. Yeah, and the problem with this is is they throw these court, these young quarterbacks in and expect them to shine like right away. Yeah. You know? Like but that is a dumb move. It really is a dumb move. Any any quarterback that's been playing long enough should know better than that. Yep. Unbelievable. So wow. Yeah, I want to see that video if you find it. I will. If I find it again, I will show you. <laughs> what the f are you doing? Yikes, dude. Yikes. Eesh. Um, and then the Minnesota Vikings. Right? What, what the hell is up with that? What, what, what the hell's up with the 49ers giving up a 97 yard touchdown pass to Sam Darnold? <laughs> and just a difference. I got to show you. I got to share that video too. When I find that video, I got to show you that video. Because everybody is impressed with the referee in that video. They're more impressed with what he did than what Justin Jefferson did out running from them. Because he's hauling ass. So he's running down the field. Has to avoid being hit by Justin Jefferson and two Niners defenders. So he slams on the brakes, then picks up, and then picks up speed and runs ahead of everybody to then turn back pedal into the end zone so he can call the touchdown. That ref was booking it, bro. Maybe he should be playing the NFL. It sure looked like it. Because <laughs> he was motoring, dude. Unbelievable. I know we'll send you that one if I, when I come around and see it. it has, that was the highlight of the day on everybody's thing for Monday. Wow, dude. It was unbelievable to see. I'm like, okay. And then Justin Jefferson gets hurt. Uh... They, I can't remember if they were already without Hawkinson or if Hawkinson got hurt in the game and he was out the rest of the game. And they were already out with out, uh, Jordan a uh, Addison, who was their back, not their backup, their second receiver. They're, you know, they're, you know, Jefferson's one. He was number two. He's number two. He's the number two guy. And they still held on to win against San Francisco. Bro. Holy crap. What the hell is going on with San Francisco? I don't know. But they're going to make themselves right because they're playing my crap ass team this week. Um, I digress. <laughs> Just saying, Minnesota, what's going on up there in Minneapolis, man? This is interesting. Interesting thing. Uh, Patriots almost pulling off a win against the Seahawks. Uh, Seahawks, you barely beat the Broncos last week. You, you, Your defense did most of the work to keep Denver out because your special teams was garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that almost cost you the game against Denver. And uh, but Patriots beating Cincinnati and then holding their own pretty decently against Seattle, another team that I think we both kind of thought would be lucky to win three or four games. Only because they ain't been that great for a while, dude. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm just saying though, it's just surprising that defense is like, damn, <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty good. And then there's the Giants. 
Oh, what do we have to get on the jazz, man? I kind of feel bad in the sense that they were already having struggling issues with kickers, and then your kicker gets hurt. Yeah. And then you can't, you don't have a proper backup. And you can't, and you still score three touchdowns, and you still can't win the game. Yeah. When you don't give up a touchdown. What? That is insane. First team in NFL history. Crazy, bro. Uh, Chargers beat the Panthers. Not surprised. A little bit shocked, though. Panthers benched Bryce Young, the number one draft pick from two years ago. And every time I, I, I keep telling you, every time I see the Texans pull off a W, man, I bet you they're kicking themselves in the ass for that move. Because mm-hmm. they could have had C.J. Stroud. Could have had him. Or with Bryce Young. Ah. Yeah, I'm not going to dog on him too much. It's not the kid's fault. It's really that, that organization. I don't know. It was shite before he got there. Yeah, and listen. I understand you want to make the move up to get your future quarterback. You picked the wrong one, and you were so stupid that you gave up your top receiver. But he basically had no one to throw to anyways. Mm-hmm. It's like, I kind of feel like how I kind of fleets um, New Orleans a couple of years ago with Madden. when <laughs> They said, we want Chris Olave. I'm like, cool, you don't have a quarterback to throw. Throw him the ball. But sure. I'll take your two first round picks for Chris Olave. Wow. Crazy. I'm like, you want him back? You can have him back. I don't care. Crazy. For two first round picks, all right. Cool. So I'm like, who's throwing him the ball? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Sorry. I had that backwards. They offered me Chris Olave and first two round picks for Lamar Jackson. And I was like, who's he throwing the ball to? Yeah, dude. Like, you gave me Chris Olave and two first round picks for Lamar Jackson. Granted, Lamar's talented, but when you got no one to throw to, what are you going to do? Run option all all year? Right. So, I wish I could have just watched the highlights of the games and just watched Lamar just running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Because <laughs> that's all he would have been doing. <laughs> because right. I had his best receiver. I digress. Anyways. Uh, Ravens not as good as we thought. And I know you don't really like them anyways. So you didn't give them that it, great of a record. It is so early in the season for them. And now they kind of... It takes them a while to heat up, but once they heat up, they're they're irritating. Yeah, but it's just it's a bit of a shocker to lose to the Raiders. Yeah, and I believe they were up ten at one point. Yeah, dude, that's... late in the game. It's one thing if you're up ten early in the game and then something happens and you kind of like fall off, but when you're up late in the game by ten, and it's the Raiders who, again, a lot of people think are not going to be that great and are going to be in the search for a quarterback in this draft, upcoming draft. That does not look good. Yeah. To say the least. Uh, game of the weekend, of course, like we said, mentioned earlier, the Chiefs and Bengals. Chief ace, uh, a lot of controversy over an obvious... Why did they give the game of the week two weeks in a row? This is just crazy, bro. It's a good game, bro. Right? It was a good game. Um, but uh, a supposedly controversy pass interference call that wasn't a controversy. Dude, yeah. you, you hit the receiver before the ball arrives. Guess what? Pass interference, just like at any point in the rest of the game. Sets up a chance for them, the Chiefs, on because it was I think it was fourth but down. But you know you're always going to have them piss for fans. Oh, act like you didn't see it or whatever. Right. So. Mike, yours blinds the referees that can't see holding when, they, when it's clear and obvious, too. Right. Um, so there you go. Uh, the Texans beating the Bears, not really a surprise. I think we both had the Texans in that one anyways. Uh, we know that you know, we understood Caleb was going to take some lumps early on. Yeah. All of the rookie starters, though, are taking lumps early on. Unfortunately, yeah. So uh, we'll see what happens. I think I think the rookies will start looking better once they get that bye week in at whatever point in their team schedule. Because they'll have they'll have game tape 
on themselves to see how they're handling the speed of the NFL. Yeah. And I think once they get that, to get a chance to really look at it. Granted, I know they're watching film all the time, but you're not really watching film on yourself all the time. You're trying to prepare for the next team. I still think that Bo Nix has a chance to be a good quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, I do too. He really does have a chance because he does he does shine when he gets when he gets the ball up like he's supposed to. A lot of and times, he still can run, dude. Yeah, but a lot of times someone just needs to catch the damn ball. That that's the biggest problem he has. A lot of guys are not catching the damn ball. He gets it right to him. Just catch it. Make a catch. Help, help, help poor Bo out. I mean, I know, I get it. We were really I think at that point but... when we were watching the game too, I said something about Oopsie. how uh, in the in the next practice they're gonna probably make them guys just sit there and catch balls all freaking week. Yes, yeah. it was horrible, man. Because you got to catch. Yeah, because that was ridiculous. All right, and then finally. Like we meant, like I mentioned a little while ago, did Kirko reverse his prime time curse? Because that last drive broke. Little Mahomes in. <laughs> little Mahomes is not gonna lie. Well, I mean, he's got a chip on his shoulder, dude. I mean, he really and does. his ankle obviously felt better. So, but I know it was a minute, about a minute forty left. No timeouts. Drove him down for a touch, game winning touchdown. Insane. Good. And, of course, a lot of people are like, oh, well, if Atlanta, or not Atlanta, if Philadelphia converts that third down when they threw the ball and, or would have ran it and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can say all you want, but still, you have credit to where credit's due. And the fact that Kirk Cousins finally looked good on a primetime game. And Randy finally stands Kirk. One time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see when next primetime game, Kirky. <laughs> I like Kirk Cousins. Is it a fluke or is it? Yeah. Did, was it, it a new trend? We'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, I I like Kirky. I really do. But I don't like primetime Kirky. <laughs> right. I just don't. Uh, let's preview some games for the next week. Uh, currently, right now, we have the Jets beating the Patriots 21-3. to uh, we were talking up that Patriots defense, but what happened? Mm-hmm. What happened? I don't know. It's... Old man Rogers is tearing you guys up a bit. Oh boy. Uh, let's see here. You guys are hosting the Chargers. I give you a good chance in that game since it's Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Though your fans travel, and I'm sure you guys have crap tons in Los Angeles because you know we didn't have a team in Los Angeles for the longest time, so. Uh, and we know how LA loves winners a lot. So, in you know, you're, you have a franchise that's known for winning. So, yep. Uh, so you would have traveled. Your fans would have traveled well, anyways. But my biggest worry about this whole situation is, is if they can't move the ball on offense, the defense is gonna be out there a lot. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but Justin Herbert can pick apart a defense. And he's pretty damn quick himself. So even if T.J. Watt can get to him a couple times, mm-hmm. he can move. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure that my defense is gonna hold up this week. Yeah. I'm in not- fact, I think even in my uh, in my fantasy football, I switched defenses because I was like. Yeah, because I don't know, man. Don't know if it's gonna pl- plan out for him this week. And if honestly, if I'm the Chargers, and I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just saying, give my opinion as a, of what I would do strategically. They expect ground and pound in Pittsburgh, and they yeah. probably want this to be a ground and pound game because it will keep them in it. Um, I believe. I I would actually probably take the take the leash off of Patrick and let him throw. Let, yeah. let them try to pick apart that defense because Pittsburgh's. You've already put two game games Patrick. on on the film where you did ground and pound. Did you say a pitch? Yeah, yeah, pitch. yeah. Justin Herbert, sorry. I was like, whoa, whoa hold up, wrong, wrong Herbert. What what, what quarterback we're talking? Wrong, oh, wrong, wrong Herbert. Wrong Herbert. 
<laughs> Just stuck on stuck on college, yeah. A little bit there. Um, a little tired too. Uh, so that's I, I mean, honestly though, if you're the Chargers, you have two two game films now where you did ground and pound. Maybe take the leash off Justin Herbert <laughs> and let him throw around and kind of maybe see if you can surprise the Steelers this week. Because we already know Steelers ain't hucking and chucking. No, they're not. They're grounding and pounding. And no hugging and chucking there. Nope. No fields. You might be able to catch them off guard with a play, maybe two. My question is, what are they doing with Russell? Is it, is it worse than what we think? Why are they holding them back so long? I mean, if what's the point in rushing them if you are still winning? Yeah, but it, to me, it's like and, I'd rather have the quarterback that has more wins that, you know, is, is more capable. Is more capable. Yeah, I understand. So, but I, my biggest fear is something bigger going on that they're keeping under wraps, and that's why he's been staying on the sidelines so much. Maybe he wants to be healthy. So, maybe. Maybe but, he doesn't want to this injury to lead to possibly a season-ending injury. I guess so. We'll see. I mean, of course, a lot of a lot of pendants are like, why doesn't Miami just call up the Steelers and see if Russell's available? Right. I mean, because it doesn't look like they want to start him. True. I mean, depends on itself, I guess, but that is what it is with that one. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, Broncos come down to Tampa. I wish we got tickets to that game. Broncos come down to Tampa just because Bo. And I, I do like Baker. Uh, Broncos come down to Tampa to take on the Buccaneers. Uh, I'd like to see a good game for for Bo. I don't know if they're going to win. But at least if he looks better than he has the past two weeks and his receivers actually catch the ball more often, you know, that'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, Dolphins go to Seattle. I don't know if the Dolphins can win that game. I don't know either, bro. That defense is not that good, and without your starting quarterback, and you don't have your starting quarterback. Like, yeah, yep. Know. How much can you really run? Um, the Rams are getting their starting left tackle back, but uh, their offensive line is still kind of in shambles. Um, you know, Alar Jackson is off his two game suspension. Uh, Niners have some injuries too, so it may be closer. Then if, you know, McCaffrey, Kittle just got hurt recently. I can't remember if it was earlier today or yesterday. He was seen um, limping off the field. And um, uh, Debo got put on the short-term IR, too. So they're a little banged up, too. But, uh, more need more defensive players to be banged up Niner. So. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't need... I don't mean Matthew killed Stafford. Sorry, That's right. Matthew Stafford. By the way, I don't know Matthew Stafford personally, so I shouldn't be calling him Matthew. My bad. <laughs> it kind of kind of goes through when you talk about the Rams too. You say we all the time. Hey, that is we, not me, though. <laughs> That's our logo. That's our <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's we, not me, though. <laughs> there you go. Ah, use that one, didn't I? Got it. All right. Uh, oh God. I don't, who's gonna watch the Giants and Browns? Uh, maybe I watched the 1950s version. Yeah. Back when those were teams yeah. were good. I don't think anybody's watching that game unless you're a fan of that team. Yeah. How many game, How many people watch that game? Oh, about ten thousand. What do you mean about ten thousand? Well, they're Fans of those two teams, but that's not that's not uh, appointment viewing football for me at and all. At what point too do you have that many fans? Be just because I think you have leisure fans. You have fans that don't know much about football, yeah. and they don't care much about winning. Very and true. I'm sorry, but if you're gonna be a football fan, be a fan of somebody that wins. Like, let's be honest. Well, if that's the case, I should have stopped being a Rams fan back after 2004. I was... 
I'm just saying. <laughs> we don't win a lot. We win yeah, and, then we, and then we fall apart. And yeah, then we win but... and then we fall apart. I'm just saying. But the Rams have procedure history to do. Luckily, since we've been around since 1937. So. <laughs> Started in Cleveland and then we got kicked out <laughs> by the Browns. Aren't you happy? Yeah, I kind of am. We're back in Los Angeles where we belong. Anyways, uh, Packers or uh, Titans. Ish, that's uh, I no, <laughs> just no, no. Bears Colts again, no, no. Hopefully yeah. Bears win that one though. Yeah, I I like to see Caleb Williams get a win. Yeah, well I mean he does have a win. There are one and one. Yeah, but the first one was ugly. We know. Yeah. Um. Oh, sneaky game of the week because of how well they're doing. Texans Vikings two and O teams in Minnesota. CJ Stroud Minnesota Minnesota eh? Little Minneapolis Minnesota yeah. eh? We're going to Leonard Candy. It's gonna be uh <laughs> quite quite interesting. All right. Oh, uh, anyways, oh ooh, possibility of another good game here. Philadelphia, New Orleans, in New Orleans. You're right. It could be a good game. Another game that could possibly lead to an L for us because I'm pretty sure we both picked the Eagles for that one. Yeah. Another L. No, no, no. Uh, Panthers and uh, Raiders in Las Vegas. Uh, Ravens, Cowboys on Fox. You think we'll get the first? Win for the Ravens in Dallas, or does Dallas bounce back? What do you think? Mm, I don't think Dallas bounces back. So you think uh, Baltimore finally gets their first win of the year then? I take it. This is for Pillar Sports, and you can find us on TikTok, Instagram, X, Facebook at Chris and Randy, and Clapper. Also, anywhere you find your favorite podcast. And remember, keep on talking sports. All sounds on this podcast are provided by Cap Cut Pro and purchase intro song. And articles found on ESPN.com, NFL.com, WWE.com, and Bleacher Report. Yep, I mean, yeah, man, it's like, what what's going to happen with this? I don't know. I mean, it's Dallas, I mean, luckily Dallas is at home, I guess. But, I mean, the Ravens can't keep losing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a due for a bounce back at some point. Uh, I mean, I, granted, they lost by a toe technically in the first game. But, I mean, if I'm Harbaugh, I have that team. I, I'm trying to fire them up some way. Yeah, Because dude. they can't do this anymore. Um, and if you're Dallas, I mean, they both got a chip on their shoulder. They both really shouldn't have lost. I mean, you could say you really shouldn't have lost last week if you're Dallas, but, I mean, you got blown out. You got embarrassed that whole. So now you got to, like, hey, man, we got to bounce back. We can't have that happen again. Right. And if you're the Ravens, you can't lose a 10-point lead at home to the Raiders. Right. So it's really going to be interesting to see um, what that game. So it's a possibility of another good game, but, I mean, I'd just be watching it just because I want to see the Ravens win. <laughs> I don't care who wins. I know you don't. I'm sure you would be happy if somehow all the fans all left the stadium at the same time and then it just collapsed and took out both teams. I digress. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not saying a word. But you laughed. <laughs> uh, sneaky good game. One and mm. one Lions and one and one Cardinals. Say it. Cardinals right. blew out my team. Game. Had a good lead against the Bills. Uh, Lions need to bounce back after a little bit of a hiccup against the Bucks, so sneaky, sneaky. Um, so Kirk O Chains, here's your opportunity to see if that curse has been officially reversed as you host the Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday Night Football. That's not even fair, though, to, to put that on him like that. Oh, I'm putting it on him. You're such a butthole. I'm you putting know that on him. Kansas City's going to go in there and whoop their ass. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Chalk Just that. so you can say it's a fluke. There's no reason. Chalk that L up, bud. Enjoy that L. 
Sunday night choke job. <sighs> I digress. And like I said, I, I love one. Give me one o'clock Kirk any day of the week, baby. One o'clock Kirk. <laughs> but prime time Kirk. But prime time Kirk. Uh-uh. I'm, not, I'm hesitant at even late afternoon, Kirk. <laughs> He's kind of hit or miss, too. But if you give me 1 o'clock, Kirk, woo! I mean, that's it's MVP. His, it's his peak hour. That, that's, 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 a, that's a Hall of Fame MVP, Kirk, right there. <laughs> just, just saying, give him the MVP at 1 o'clock. Might as well just, boop. But prime time and late night or late afternoon and prime night? Nope. Don't give me Kirk. Uh, surprise, though, only favored by three is Kansas City. Uh, is it because they kind of struggled a little bit against uh, Cincinnati this week? Maybe. Let's see here. I'll, I'll go back over the spreads real quick here in a minute, and we'll see if there's any surprises on those. Um, Monday night doubleheader this week as Jacksonville goes up to Buffalo. Well, actually, it's technically a doubleheader simulcast. Because you got the 7.30 start for the Bills-Jaguars. 45 minutes later, Commanders-Bengals start their game. Um, Commanders, if you win that game, I'll be shocked. I think this is where Cincinnati kind of starts looking more like they normally do as long as Burrow's not injured. Yeah. Um, I expect that. Uh, seven and a half, uh, seven spread on that one. I can see that. Um, but, oh, Jacksonville, can we get the Highlander to show up? Can he drop the Heinz on his name for just this game and be right. just Josh Allen, the Highlander? It's so weird. Yeah. We're talking about the linebacker, not the quarterback. <laughs> yeah. I want that. I want the Highlander. We, they're going to need the Highlander to be the Highlander. They're going to need him, man. There can only be one. <laughs> All right, let's check these spreads real quick, and then we'll call it a good night. Uh, let's see here. Uh, surprisingly, you are favored at home by a point and a half. Does that shock you a little bit yourself? Yeah, a little bit because of the fact of just the fact that our offense hasn't they haven't been that great, and the defense is going to have to hold up against a better offense. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I would have. Maybe kind of, I w- I don't know if I would give the Chargers, uh, the favorite spread, but I would probably would have done. I'd pick them, kind of a pick them. Just hey man, whoever pick one, whoever wins you win. Yeah. Uh, six and a half for Tampa Bay over Denver. That's probably about right. That is about right. Uh, four and a half for Seattle over the Dolphins. That seems actually kind of low considering they don't have Tua. Yeah. Yeah, true. I kind of feel like that might be a six possibly spread. Should have been. That's just me. Um, Surprisingly, six and a half. And I'm only saying this because of the injuries to the Rams offensive line that they're only favored by six and a half. Niners over the Rams. I'm just saying. um, if If we were... Healthy in the Niners were in their state right now. I would say that's high. If we were even, I would still say that's probably high. But I don't know, six and a half seems kind of technically low to me. And I hate to say that about my own freaking team. But uh, Cleveland six and a half over the Giants. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll just we'll just keep going. <laughs> Titans favored over the Packers. I can't buy that. I can't buy it either. I don't get that. That doesn't make any sense. Oh. Uh, is there anything else? No. I'm trying to see if there's anything that's like, yeah. No, we already talked about it. Uh, oh. <laughs> Can we say that this might be a little bit low? Maybe just because they're both kind of garbage, but Raiders only favored by five against the Panthers? What? Yeah, they, no. Is it just because they're both garbage, maybe? Maybe. I mean, that's what it feels like. Maybe it's just... Uh, Detroit favored by three over Arizona in Arizona. It's a little bit of a uh, surprise. Yeah. Considering how Arizona's played this year so far. Hmm. A little bit of a surprise to me. I would have thought um, 
maybe your line, one and a half, how your line is, one and a half. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I digress. Buffalo, five, uh, five point favorites over Jacksonville. Oof. I mean, Jacksonville hasn't looked good. They haven't looked good at all, and that's the scary part about it. Yep, and Buffalo's kind of looking like Buffalo again. Mm. Are we going to have to circle the wagons? We might have to start circling the wagons. We just might. We'll see what happens. Uh, so we got a good weekend of football. The Ducks are off this weekend, so we don't have to worry about them. Um, I think. Are the Gators off this weekend? I didn't bother looking. That's kind of my fault. Here, I got a quicker way of doing this. Let's go this route, and then where's the Gator head for football? Football game. Gators, where's your Gator head for football? I have your basketball. Why don't I have your football? And it scores, and then we'll switch this from top 25 to all FBS. Okay, they're on the road. They are they are playing on the road. They're favored against Mississippi State at Mississippi State. They're favored by six. That's a little bit of a shocker to me, honestly. Well, hopefully they can pull it off. Right, but I'm happy at least the Ducks are off this week as they get ready for conference play the following week, which I believe is against UCLA. Uh, fifth week. Yep. Fifth week is UCLA. So our fourth game, fifth week of the season, they play UCLA. And we play them in Pasadena. So we're going to be in the Rose Bowl. We get to play the Rose Bowl this year, whether we want to or not. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we're playing in the playoff. But I feel better, though, beating the Beavers the way we did. Yeah. Because we've moved – I feel like we finally moved away – We moved away from how we looked at game one because we should have crushed Idaho. I hate to say that to Idaho, any Idaho fans that we may have out there. I'm just saying you might because Prineville's kind of close to Idaho. So I'm just saying. Prineville, Oregon. Shout out <laughs> to our listeners in Prineville. Um, so how we've moved progressively through that, I, I'm enjoying that. And I just... Since college football, you don't have to disclose injuries. I just wonder if Dylan was Dylan Gabriel was hurt is the reason why he didn't really take off running and we didn't really run RPO like we would normally. Because I understood before when we had um, Herbert not do it as a whole lot, and then when we didn't do it. Um, We didn't really do it with Bo much either. Um, we didn't trust a quarterback behind them. I like Dante Moore. He also has a year starting experience in UC- from UCLA. Yeah. So, whereas no one else did um, before they came in, besides obviously Dylan Gabriel, we know about him in his um, history. Um, former Central Florida mm-hmm. Golden Knight. So, but I'm just saying. I just think it would be – it's okay for you guys if he's not hurt to run him because I don't feel like the talent gap is not going to be so substantial. The only thing that would make me hesitant is the experience gap is going to be a lot larger than the talent gap is. Because Dante Moore can sling it. Yeah. I'm already – I was – I really was kind of – honestly, myself, a little selfish. I kind of wanted Dante Moore to kind of win the job. But that's just me. I hope Dylan still has a great year, obviously, because it's the Ducks. But yeah, I really kind of wanted to see Don take the job because <laughs> he's he's almost a prototypical quarterback. He's about six four, two twenty ish, has an has a cannon on a, on his shoulder basically, yeah. and he's he's very athletic too. So I'm looking forward to next year because I believe um, he'll be definitely our starter next year. Uh, and he didn't, because <laughs> like when we get in blowouts and we put in backups and they look like garbage, <laughs> you sit there like, eh, but we blew out the Beavers and we put in Dante Moore and he looked pretty good. Threw a couple passes. We were surprised he threw some passes. Yeah. We're like, we're not just running handoff right now because this game's over, bud. 
But yeah. and the opportunities he got to throw a couple times, he looked pretty good. So cool. looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking forward to next week. The next week because they'll be back and we can watch them. And also because I don't want to see my other football team get decimated this weekend. <laughs> well, keep your fingers crossed, man. Maybe they'll maybe they'll pull it out. Yeah. Well, luckily, like I said, we got alert Jackson back from suspension. Haven't seen. I think is still healthy, so we'll have our tackles. Which Avila and Jonah Jackson being injured, kind of like ooh, that's not good. Yeah. Or imagine that our middle again. Like, God, how's yeah. Puka doing? Uh, Puka found out could potentially not be just the four weeks; could be five to seven weeks. Mm. And uh, Cooper is dealing with his foot injury, might not play. But that might be more of the choice of the team, just so he doesn't aggravate it and make it worse. Give him a week, and then come back the next week. Like, eh, it kind of sucks because we are playing our division rival, and we really can't afford to go 0-3 because we're going 0-3 or we're probably done. We're probably going to be lucky if we even make the playoffs then. So at what point do you, uh, you think, okay, well, then let's just – be shite all year so I can get a quarterback. After this weekend. Right? After this weekend. Yeah. If we're over three. Um I mean, we're not going to be that bad, unfortunately. I think we'll surprise um especially when we get healthy. It's just gonna be too little too late. I'd my my actual hope is is one of these quarterbacks that they're talking up early right now. How's that? And I hate to say it because it would feel bad for the kid, but it would make me feel better as a Rams fan because he'd be there at whatever we end up drafting or within range for us to move up to go get him um, that he kind of slides. So um, I wouldn't mind if it was uh, Quinn Ewers from Texas. I know he's now dealing with a little bit of an injury, uh, and they're so confident in themselves that they're not even bothered. They didn't, if he was even healthy, I don't think they'd even have played him this week after what they saw with Arch last week. Arch, Man, Arch Manning. I should yeah. call him Arch, but boy, he sure looked more like his grandfather than he did either one of his uncles. All right. That 67. Just, whoo! And you're like, wait a minute. That says Manning. Manning's can't run like that. And you think about, <laughs> right. and then you think about all the highlights you've seen post uh, from the NFL films of Saints highlights, and you're like, Oh, wait a minute. There was a Manning who used to be able to run like that. His name was Archie Manning. All right. He just didn't wear that number. He wore eight instead. Right. <laughs> instead of 16. So. All, right. All right, man. I think that'll do it for us tonight. I think we kind of uh, beat the horse, as yeah, they say. Yeah, we did. I'm really terrible about you, brother. <laughs> I am. And it was been fun, though, man. It has. Um, I'm glad to be doing this again and being consistent with it. Mm. You know, football season is a little bit easier for us to be consistent. So. Yes. Because, you know, we're always watching. We're always watching. Remember, you may not always see us, but we're always watching. <laughs> we're like the angels in the yellow. <laughs> but we're the angels on our couch. <laughs> Pretty much, dude. <laughs> or a recliner. <laughs> ah, it's so comfy. And, and the only time we're not watching is if we... Fall asleep because we're old men. Yeah, that too. Or, yeah. or the game is just like garbage, like tonight's game. I'm sorry. I mean, glad Aaron's doing good. They're up 24 to 3, but that's Patriots. I don't care. Right. He was playing a good opponent. Cincinnati, I would have watched. Obviously, Steelers, of course. Um, right. I just, I was trying to, Kansas City, we would have watched. Anybody else. Pretty much. Uh, not the Texans. Not the. Not I'm sorry. Not the Titans. Titans. Texans. Texans. Now, we'll watch that one. Not the Giants either. Oh God, no. <laughs> no, I I don't even want to. I don't even know if I can stomach watching a game. Damn it, we played the freaking Giants this year. I think I'm gonna have to watch this one game. <laughs> They're playing the Rams. I think. If I remember correctly, right, they yeah, we play them later in the year in New York. Damn it. I gotta watch that game. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you know you win. Oh, boy. We should have won one of our first two games. We didn't do that, though. Yeah. Hopefully, we're healthy enough that we should win. 
But anyways, I digress. So I'm gonna get on the sad box. part is it's only beginning of the year. It's like why are these guys hurt already? What were you guys doing on the off season? Right. Because y'all you weren't really playing in the preseason, that's for sure. So Jesus, evidently. Anyways, I digress. We're gonna end up making this longer than it needs to be. So we'll be back next week. We'll have more football talk, obviously. Uh we'll should have wrestling next week is not the previous no, not the week or not the episode before the pay-per-view ple so we will not be doing match card yet but we will be talking about any good storylines that are developing for the match card at yeah. bad blood which is the day before so. yes sir you, in two Sundays, we'll be... In, oh, my God. I don't even know if I want to go to Jacksonville now in two weeks. Uh, I was like, I was looking forward to this. I'm not looking forward to it anymore. It is the cold. So it'll be kind of cool to see Anthony Richardson back in Florida. So that'll be kind of... If he's healthy. Um, so that'll be kind of fun. And, God, I just hope the Jaguars pull that one off. I'm just sick and tired of watching this. Right. It's like right. watching a train. It's like I'm in a bad dream and it just won't quit. <laughs> For two of the football teams that I professionally cheer for, at least your team's doing good. Thank God, so one of our teams is doing. For good. now, dude, they're, they're that's not so shitty. Season end today, you'd be the division champs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed playoff spot. I'll take it right now. I'll just take that. We're, we're good. We division champs right now. Right now, you're division champions. Woo! Woo! Let me think about it. Cincinnati, Baltimore, both winless. Cleveland finally won a game, and you guys have yet to lose. Division champs, right here. Pittsburgh, where's our terrible towels? To start waving them. Woo! Right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, guys. Um, we might give it. Uh, probably just going to give a standings update because we'll be winding down the season um, over the next two weeks for baseball because um, basically it's basically over. Uh, again, congratulations to Shohei Otani. We love you for choosing the Dodgers and just being awesome, dude. Yeah. Like, and we're not tr- we're not really being homers because we've been doing this past couple of years for Shohei. We've been like, my God, this guy just keeps doing shit that hasn't been done since. Guess who? Babe Ruth. Yep. And now he's done something even Babe Ruth can't never claim. We were calling all this shit before they were. Uh... Clamoring to him, so as my, yeah, we were like, "What is this guy doing?" And they're like, "Oh, it's okay. It's like, yeah, he's he's pitching and he's hitting. Okay, yeah. The point is, he's pitching like an ace. He's hitting like he's your best player on the team." Mm-hmm. Hello, right? You guys should have been more hyped up about this. And then the hype train started picking up. We're like, "Okay, there you go. Now you kind of understand where." We were coming from on that. And now it's just this explosion of just like, wow. We're seeing things that no one thought possible. Right. Because you're he's a power hitter. He's a sneaky base stealer because that's sneaky. He does not look fast. Yeah. But he's fast enough. That's all you got to be. He's fast enough. And he's just fast enough. He's a ninja. Yeah, maybe. He's samurai or something. <laughs> You're like, can you steal that base? What? Uh-huh. How did he, did he? Wait, did he teleport? <laughs> because what did he just? And now he's. That's a, I'm sure some of the catchers and pitchers are just like, how? How did he do that? Did he just? He had to have teleported. He he's either teleported or as Chris thinks, he's on steroids. He's got to be on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Randy's drunk right now. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Benadryl will do to you. Yeah, Benadryl podcasts don't mix, bro. That's true. All right. Anyways, so <laughs> get off on that one. So, yeah, so that'll be pretty much the lineup. We'll do some wrestling talks, talk about any storylines going into Bad Blood. Then the following week after that one will be the freaking preview. Um, and, of course, we'll have more football talk. Um, Maybe I'll be happy and we'll have a win next week. I don't know. We'll see. I hope so because he's it's depressing. He's kind of depressing around here. He's messing up my football Sundays. Whatever. It's not my fault. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, guys. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And as always, keep, keep on, on talking, talking sports. sports.
The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi said, it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer Radio Show on demand every day wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth.